Hi everyone, I wanted to create a tutorial to show you how to make the most of the spelling and grammar check that's in Microsoft Word. I know many of my students use Microsoft Word to create their papers, and so I wanted to show you what that program can offer you as far as helping your grammar and mechanics in your paper be the best it can be. So I have here a student paper, a sample paper, and to activate, after you've written the paper, to activate the grammar and mechanics check, you go up to tools in the top and you can't quite see it on my screen I think but it's right here between font and table and there's tools so I'm going to click on that and you can see the drop down menu here so you're going to click on grammar and mechanics however before you actually run it you want to click on options here because you want to set up a few things now first of all you want to make sure down here that your writing style is formal Okay, this way, um, Word will check your document for an academic writing style instead of an informal writing style. So it's going to check for certain constructions, a certain degree of passive voice, and things like that that you don't want in your paper. You also want to make sure that it does um, things like check your spelling as you type. That will help correct your spelling as you go. Um, if you want it to offer suggestions, then um, you can check on that. Oh, let's see. What else do you need here? Um, you might, okay, you probably only have a custom dictionary loaded. Another fun feature it has is um, you want to make sure check grammar is checked and check grammar with spelling. But it also has this show readability stats, and I'll show you what that does at the very end um, of your spell check. It gives you some really good information about your writing. So now I'm going to click on OK since I have those settings in place and it's going to run spell check. So for every option it gives me I actually need to look at it and see if that is a change that I want to make or if um, what I typed is really what I mean because this really is only a computer. There's only so much it can tell me um, and it's going to check what I have written against its very computer-like understanding of syntax. So for example um, it's telling me here I need to consider my conjunction use. The debate over what tactics are considered torture and which are not has become a significant point of debate not only in the United States but among people living abroad. Um, and it's suggesting but also among people living abroad. I think that's a good change so I'm going to go ahead and change it. And so then it's going to go through here. This one is passive voice. The debate over what tactics are considered torture um, and it says that's passive voice. Passive voice is a good thing to get rid of, so this is something I might change, and I, you can revise it right up here. Um, I'm not going to go through and revise everything in this particular paper because I really want to get to the end, but do take the time to consider every suggestion that it gives you. Again, it'll provide the, the what it sees as the problem sentence up here, and it'll provide suggestions for you down here. You have the option of ignoring it, ignoring everything that is in this case passive voice, um, moving on to the next sentence, or if you type up here and make a change, making a change. Okay, so right now I'm just going to ignore everything because I want to get to the readability stats at the end. So this is not what you do, but I'm going to do it just for the purpose of showing you what I want to show you. And you see that ignore all goes through everything. Okay. So here's my readability stats, and here's what's interesting. So it tells me how many words are in my paper, um, how many characters, how many paragraphs. It tells me how many sentences are per paragraph, and you really want this to be probably, um, probably around 16 to 20. Okay, Words per sentence is appropriate around 20 for what we're looking at. Characters per word, 5.2 is a good one. Okay, so you want that around 5. As long as that's, you know, around 5, then you know you're using an academic vocabulary and longer words and not just a whole bunch of little baby words, if you will. Um, and I don't mean that condescendingly, but you, you know what I mean. And then down here is really what's interesting. You want your passivity to be single digit, if at all possible. And if you don't know what passive voice is, all you need to do is do a quick Google search for passive voice and it'll tell you. And this last number is really interesting. This number tells you what grade level you're writing on. And the highest it's going to go, um, to the best of my knowledge, is 12. That's 12th grade. 
Um, so it says that this student is writing on a 12th grade level. Pretty cool. Um, if it says like, you know, 11.5, what that means is 11th grade, fifth month. So it's not like 11 and a half, but it, it means the fifth month of 11th grade. So that's a really interesting thing um, to tell you what your writing level is looking like. And it's these averages really combined with the passive voice or the passive sentence percentage that is used to calculate this number. So that's just one interesting thing that um, I always have my high school students use because then, of course, for high school students, they always want to make sure they have the highest number, the most appropriate number they can. Um, if you have any questions about, about Word or um, any of this, please go ahead and do post in the QTI and let me know where I can respond and help everyone. And if you have any questions about the individual grammar and mechanic items that it pops up, a quick Google search will really help a whole lot on that. I highly recommend the Purdue website. They have an online writing lab that has proved very helpful for my students. Thank you for listening, and I hope this really helps. If you have any questions, please let me know.